There are many kinds of Android apps where you need to display a list of data that scrolls whenever there's too much data to fit on the screen. I'm going to show you how to display a list of simple strings, and then in later videos, I'll expand that to more customized displays. I'm working in a project named List View, and I'll show you in the Values folder under Resources that I've added a new file called clothing.xml. This resource definition file declares a string array. Now, we haven't seen this before, but a string array is exactly what it says, a collection of string values. And because it's an array, it stores the data in a fixed order. This is a great way to provide a small amount of data to an application where the data won't be dynamic. That is, you won't be getting the data from a server or otherwise changing it at runtime. Just like all resources, you have to assign an ID. And I've assigned a resource ID of clothing. Next, I'll go to my layout file, contentmain.xml. And I'm going to delete this image view control. And I'll replace it with a list view. You can find this in the palette under containers. And I'm going to drag and drop it into place and place it in the top left corner of the activity. Then, I'll go to text mode and take a look at the generated code. I'm going to change the width and the height from wrap content to match parent so that the list view always expands to fill the available space. Then, I'm going to reformat my code to place things in the right order and then add a little bit of space here and then look at it in design view again. That's all I have to do in the layout file. All the rest of the work will be in Java code. I'll find my main activity class. And I'll scroll down to the bottom of the onCreate method. This is where I'll add the code that gets the data from the resources file and passes it to that list view control. First, I'll declare an array of strings. I'll name it items. And I'll use this expression to retrieve it from the resources file. I'll start with the method getResources. Then from there, I'll call a method named getStringArray. And then I'll pass in an ID. With a simple string, the resource ID always starts with r.string. But with an array, it starts with r.array. So I'll pass in r.array.clothing. And because that process is running in the background, scanning my code and generating the Java classes, Android Studio already knows that that resource ID exists. Next, I'll create an instance of a class called an array adapter. This is a member of the package android.widget. And it's this class that's going to bind the data to the list. The array adapter has a generic type declaration. You set this to the type of data you're passing in. I'm working with an array of strings, so I'll set my generic declaration to string. And I'll name the object adapter. Next, I'll instantiate the object using the array adapters constructor method. And I'm going to use a version of this constructor that requires a lot of information. First, you always have to pass in the context. That's this activity. So I'll pass in this. Next, I'm going to pass in a resource identifier for a layout file. Now, this isn't a layout file that I created. This will be a layout file that's included with the Android SDK. These identifiers always start with Android, lowercase, and then .r. And then I'm looking for a layout file. And the particular file I'm going to use is called simple list item one. This layout file contains a single text view component. Let's take a look at its code. I'll press Control or Command and click into the file. And then look at it in code view. And I see that all it has is a single text view. And importantly, it has an ID of text one. Notice that the ID starts with at Android colon ID. So this is how the IDs that are built into the SDK are declared. I'll come back to my code. The next value I'm going to pass in is the ID of the text view that will display my string 
for a single row. And that will be android.r.id.text1. And again, I know that because I looked at the code for that layout. And finally, I need to pass in the objects that I'm going to be displaying. This can either be a simple array of strings or a complex list of strings. And I'll pass in my array of strings that I named items. So now the adapter knows what data it's using, it knows what layout it's using for each row in the list, and it knows what the ID of the text view is to display a string. Next, I'll get a reference to my list view component that's a part of my layout. I'll type in list view, that's the name of the class, and press control space and choose it from the list to be sure it's imported into my Java class. I'll name it LV for list view, and then I'll call find view by ID and pass in the ID of the list view. That's r.id.listview. And as always, I'll cast the return value as the appropriate class. Now, if you're wondering where that ID came from, it's actually in my layout. When I dragged the list view into my layout, this ID was generated for me. And now finally, I'm ready to bind everything together. And for that, I'll call lv.setAdapter, and I'll pass in the adapter object. So it takes about four statements. Get the data, create the adapter, get the reference to the list view, and then connect the adapter to the list view. And I'll run the app and see the result. When the app comes to the screen, the onCreate method is executed and all that code is executed to go get the data and display it. Now, when I'm looking at the phone in portrait orientation, the data isn't scrolling because everything is fitting on the screen. So I'll turn the phone sideways to landscape, and now I'm only seeing a portion of the data, but I can touch the screen and drag up and down to scroll. And then I'll go back to portrait. So that's how easy it is to display data in a scrolling list in Android. You start off with a data collection, which can be either a simple array or a Java list, and then you use an adapter and a list view.